Cohn, and I'm here with... Abbas Bob. Nick Deek. Richard Peppa. And we're Team 21089. Uh, our project was the research and development of aluminum air batteries for the purpose of electric vehicles. We were advised by Dr. Dominic Gervasio and sponsored by the University of Arizona Chemical and Environmental Engineering Department. As our society slowly transitions away from a fossil fuel based economy, the production of batteries for electric vehicles has become a promising alternative for gasoline powered cars. While this marks a step in the right direction, a perfect solution has not yet been discovered. Most of today's electric vehicles are powered by lithium ion batteries, which are associated with a number of their own environmental issues. These include challenges in the mining and recyclability of lithium. For these reasons, alternatives to the lithium ion battery have been explored. The alternative that our design will be exploring is the aluminum air battery. An example of such a battery can be seen in the diagram pictured in the bottom left. In contrast with lithium, which is rare and very difficult to mine, aluminum is the most abundant metal on earth. Because of this, our aluminum air battery will not only serve as a more environmentally friendly alternative, but it will also avoid the concern of limited supply that increases the production cost of lithium batteries. Aluminum air batteries also have the advantage of a higher theoretical energy density than their lithium ion counterparts. This would allow the production of batteries that are more compact and lightweight than existing electric vehicle batteries. The fuel cell prototype for our battery will consist of an aluminum anode, a graphite cathode with a platinum catalyst, and an electrolyte made up of aluminum trichloride, potassium chloride, and sodium chloride. These components will all be held together in place by a Teflon casing and steel framing. A schematic of this prototype is pictured in the bottom right. The parameters tested for our battery will be its potential, power density, and current density. The results of these prototype tests, along with the viability of the scaled up production process, will be used to demonstrate the potential of an aluminum air battery to be used in place of lithium ion batteries in electric vehicles. And now we're going to show how we assembled our fuel cell. To start off, we're going to show you our cathode side. Our cathode side consists of a gasket, a carbon, platinum on carbon electrode, a nickel current collector, and another gasket. These gaskets are made out of a hydrophobic polymeric material. Um, they're used to seal in the material and prevent electrolyte from leaking. After we have everything in place, we're going to seal it with another Teflon cap with a hole in the top for gas inlet, which is going to be O2 in this case. Um, now we're going to go on to our anode side. The anode side also consists of a gasket followed by our aluminum. In this case, aluminum serves as the current collector and the electrode due to its conductive tendencies. And then on top of that, another gasket to seal everything in place. Um, as you can see here, I'm acting rather gently with the aluminum to ensure it doesn't tear. We've run into that problem quite a bit in these live experiments, so much so that we've had to resort to getting the heavy-duty aluminum from the grocery store. Um, and as you see, we want to orient the aluminum strip the same direction as the nickel mesh to ensure uh, easy testing in the cell. And then once everything's done, seal it in place. If you see on top, this is the hole where we insert the electro electrolyte. Um, after this, we can put everything in the steel frame. Um, if you see on the very top, these steel extensions are the gas inlet. These connect to a O2 tank in the lab. Um, this is meant to simulate the um, O2 being fed to the cathode in a real aluminum air battery. Um, once everything's balanced and everything's contacted, um, we can seal it in place with these uh, butterfly screws. This is the finished fuel cell. Next, we're going to show how we prepared our electrolyte. So we start by adding our, our measured NaCl and KCl. This is done by transferring each material to a weigh boat to ensure that proper amounts are used, and then we transfer them to our three neck flask on a heating mantle through a glass funnel. After this, we transfer our measured AlCl3 to the flask. Due to some unsafe potential hazards, our mentor came in to help us with the next step, which is heating up the electrolyte to react out all of the HCl. Once the HCl is reacted out and enough heat has been applied, the electrolyte should be in liquid form and look something like this. The electrolyte has to be in liquid form, otherwise it won't be able to facilitate ion transport and our fuel cell won't work. And again, it should look something like this. And this brings us to the last part of our in-lab procedure, which is placing the cell in the oven and collecting data. 
So as you can see me here attaching the oxygen feed lines to the cathode side of the assembled fuel cell, as well as securing connection between the current collector and the aluminum to a multimeter and um, our data software tool just to the right of the frame. Then we close the oven and we preheat it to about 145 degrees Celsius and we wait a few minutes for it to heat up and then we move over to the deposition of the electrolyte into the cell. So the first step is to take the electrolyte out of the heating mantle via a glass pipette and then place it into the cell very carefully into the holes in the top of the Teflon casing. And once the cell is complete, we move over to data collection, which will generate the graphs that we need for our results. We began our senior design project by creating and testing fuel cells that were already well established. Uh, this gave us familiarity with the procedure and allowed us to double check our results with literature. Once we were familiar with the process, we started to add our aluminum an anode and um, experimented with the composition of our aluminum chloride electrolyte. Uh, for our project, we made two electrolytes with melting points of 93 degrees Celsius and 132 degrees Celsius. Uh, these electrolytes both showed promise. Um, the operating voltage for these two electrolytes was higher than all the other electrolytes we experimented with, which we expected. Um, the only issue with our electrolyte was the current density being one order magnitude lower than the others. Um, we think this could be due to our electrolyte being non-aqueous, as our gaskets of electrode are hydrophobic. Uh, they don't protect against a non-aqueous electrolyte. And the only other explanation we believe is that due to the high temperatures that our electrolytes melt at, the electrolyte may be solidifying in the fuel cell, causing current to be limited. As it currently stands, our 93 degrees Celsius electrolyte is the best option. Once our fuel cell design meets the required specifications, it can be scaled up to meet the demands of an electric vehicle. This process flow diagram illustrates a scaled up manufacturing process that will be able to create such a battery. On the left side, the cathode production process begins with the mixing of raw graphite and platinum. This mixture, along with raw nickel, is introduced into a series of mills. The refined components are then pressed into place in a Teflon casing. The cathode and Teflon casing, along with the pressed steel casing, are placed onto a series of conveyor belts before being combined with the anode and electrolyte. To the right, the raw aluminum is refined and added to the cell as a finished anode. Further right, aluminum trichloride, potassium chloride, and sodium chloride are all reacted together to make the electrolyte, which is then combined with the other components to make the finished product. The amount of materials required for this process will be modeled after the battery used in the Tesla Model S, which is composed of 444 of these fuel cells. 5,000 of these batteries will be produced, a target also set by Tesla's production process. Basing our production goals on the industry standards, our design will be able to meet the demands of the electric vehicle market. By using aluminum instead of lithium to produce these batteries, they will be made at a lower cost and with far more environmentally friendly materials. Some future improvements we'd like to make are optimizing our fuel cell to maximize current density, experimenting with the ratio in which we mix the salts to make our electrolyte, and to maximize safety, particularly melting temperature. We also like to improve economic feasibility and advance our process flow diagram to scale up to real world demand and application. And with that, we've reached the end of our project and we just wanna give a special shout out to our advisor, Dr. Dominic Gervasio uh, and his amazing postdoc, Kai Young Park, for being in lab with us all year, um, as well as our professors, Dr. Kim Ogden and Dr. Adriana Brush, um, as well as the Chemical and Environmental Engineering Department for making this all possible. Thank you so much.